meantime, I have some questions, and it's up to you folks on who wants to answer first. Uh, and we'll, we'll get a response from both of you on this and uh, uh, any discussion that uh, uh, will amplify. But here's the first question. What are the major challenges that businesses should look out for in establishing a sound patent portfolio management policy? Who'd like to run with that first? Yeah, I, 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 I'm happy to answer that. So, I mean, when, when you're in, so uh, so a patent portfolio management policy is, is really kind of the, the strategy. What are we trying to accomplish here, right? And I think the first question you have to answer is is exactly that. Like, what are we trying to do with a patent portfolio? Um, so, if if we're mostly planning to to protect revenue streams, um, we need to decide. Okay, so so do we want to just focus on um, protecting our core revenue or core products, uh, or, or do we want a more aggressive and more expensive approach where we sort of place some bets that may not pay out? And, and that's going to make sense for different companies. If I'm a startup, um, I might want to uh, really just get a handful of patents that protect a, a very specific um, core technology. Um, but obviously, I have other things I'd rather spend my money on because I'm a startup and I'm probably resource constrained um, versus maybe a, a very mature company or very uh, even scientifically advanced company um, that has a lot of interesting things going on, some of which are not going to be commercially viable, some of which don't make sense. Um, likewise, maybe, maybe a university is, is sort of in a unique place too. Um, you know, often they, they, they uh, have uh, a lot of uh, stakeholders in terms of how they want to spend their, their money. Um, there may be a need to license the technology through a TTO that may be part of the mandate of the university. So that, that portfolio strategy would be a little different as well. It'd be, um, you know, we, we've got to really be smart with our money, but we also need to maintain good relations with the top professors at the company. We need to maintain good relations with our, our industry partners. So um, I think the most important thing is to really figure out what you're trying to do with that portfolio. Um, you know, I think one of the worst things you can do is just start filing patents and just try to try to run up the number, just, you know, go for sort of uh, quantity or quality um, to provide the appearance of an aggressive patent prosecution program. I think that ends up with um, a lot of assets that don't make sense. And, and you're kind of back at that patent printing discussion I had earlier, um, wondering uh, why you're printing so many patents all the time. Yeah, Tell great me, what do you point, think? Sam. Yeah, just to add to that, Sam, I think you, you've outlined some really great points. And I think I, I sit here and I think back to some of the conversations we have with PPMs as we help them review their current strategies. And one of the biggest things I always hear, especially because PPMs or the modern PPM is being called on to more and more to be a stakeholder and a business strategist. Um, is relationships. And, and it sounds like a funny word, but really across the business, building relationships within different departments, having close ties with your product team and understanding what they're building and why, having close ties with your commercial team, your commercial strategy, understanding how product development perhaps that your organization ties to short-term strategy versus long-term strategy helps you really design and manage your patent portfolio and your priorities on a day-to-day. -day. I think the, the most difficult job of a PPM is always having a pulse of what's going on in these relative different departments. But it's these strong relationships between departments in your role as a PPM that I help, that I think really give you that insight into perhaps some, some quick decisions, as you mentioned, Sam, at a startup that have to be made quickly. And having those relationships, especially in a larger organization when there's hundreds perhaps of product lines that exist, really help you understand what is essential for not only the short-term, but long-term commercial strategy of that business. So, you know, I think the most successful PPMs that I've seen in their role really have continuous meetings with these different stakeholders and, and help and, and really ask, sit there and ask questions. What is your strategy? How are we going to market? When? All of these important questions that help them work back a plan and a schedule of what is necessary and needed at the PPM. Yeah. 